Hey guys, Andrew here with Tate Tech, and today we're going to be talking about something really cool. We're actually going to walk you through how to build your own cloud game streaming server with your computer at home. Now, the reason that you might want to do this is A, so you don't have to pay for one, and B, because this will give you access to all of your mods, your emulators, and any games that just aren't supported by these other cloud gaming services. Now, this will be dependent on you having a solid internet connection, but short of that should work without any issues and, in my own testing, works as good or better in certain cases than a lot of the other game streaming services out there. So let's jump on in and take a look at how to get this set up. So we're going to be taking a look at two different programs that are going to power our server. The first one is called Playnight, and it's actually a library manager, similar to Steam or any of the others. What's special about Playnight is that it has a desktop interface as well as a big picture interface, again similar to Steam, but it is actually able to launch games from all the major launchers without you having to interact with the launcher. So that pesky Battle Night launcher, don't worry, you click play in Playnight and it'll go ahead and launch that, launch the game, and then minimize that client or close it for you taking out all of the manual work and extra clicks. So with this, we can always have this running in the full screen, the big picture mode, at startup, and then whenever we dial into our designated game streaming server, if that's how you intend to use it, then you can actually use it with a mouse and keyboard, a remote control, it doesn't matter. It'll work on any device that you can log into your server on, and it will have a great interface similar to a console that will immediately let you launch games from any of the other launchers. The second program we're going to be using is called Parsec, and this is really what's going to power our server. So Parsec is essentially a remote desktop program designed very specifically around gaming and low latency. Now in my testing, what you're going to find is inside the home, latency on my machines are around 15 to 16 milliseconds. What that equates to is about one frame of delay, which you'd be really hard pressed to notice in most games, especially if you're not really attuned to that game and or a professional gamer. Now, while this won't be a viable solution for professional competitive gaming, it's really great if you just want to kick back and enjoy your games on the go, or you want the convenience of saying, oh, my girlfriend or boyfriend came in and they need the TV, so I'm just going to shoot it over to my phone and keep playing. You can do that. So with that out of the way, let's get these installed and let's take a look at them. So the first program that we're going to be looking at today is Playnight. And you can get to it by going to playnight.link. And I'll include these links in the description of the video below. But this is what we're going to use to actually manage all of our games and launch them and manage all of the launchers. So this is going to be really easy. You're just going to go to download. And what we're going to want to do is download installer. While you can use the portable version, the idea is we're building a game streaming server. This will likely be a desktop that's going to be very stationary. You're not going to be moving the actual launcher around a lot. So it, let's download the normal installer for now. You'd be fine to download portable. To my knowledge, it works mostly the same. I don't know of any limitations between the two, but let's be safe and use the version that I am comfortable with myself. So you'll click download and you'll just run through the installer. There's nothing special. It'll just it's very standard. It'll ask you, hey, are you sure you want to install? There's no adware or anything like that. It's very clean. So go ahead and install that. Now, the second thing that we're going to be looking at is Parsec. Again, this is what's actually going to stream our games for us. We'll be downloading this on the host PC as well as the client PC. So we're going to go right here to download and you're just going to hit download for Windows. Now you'll see that there are downloads for Mac, Android, Raspberry Pi, and Linux. Now these are all client-only versions. The Parsec actually uses a native system that's built into Windows, so only Windows machines can serve as a host. Now it's one client and it adapts on its own. So essentially once you download the Windows version, that'll serve as both a host and client. And if you download the Mac, Android, Raspberry Pi, or Linux versions, they will be client only. The reason this is important is if you have two Windows machines, you're going to download the Windows version. There's no difference between uh, the client and the host version. Those don't exist. It's just one package. So you're going to go ahead and just download this on both of your computers. 
if you're using Mac, Android, etc. You'll go ahead and just download the Windows version on your host and then download the appropriate version on your client device. Awesome. Same thing as with Playnight, it's very clean. There's no adware. Just go ahead and run through the installer and get it set up. So now that we have Parsec up and running, you've created an account, you've logged in, and you've done this on your host device and your client device. What you'll notice is we're on our client device here, and we actually have the ability to dial right into our host device, which is also set up with our Parsec account. So if we click connect here, Awesome, so we're in play night big picture mode and we can see all of our games here. And if we want to, we can actually go ahead and click into one and see details. Um, I actually never use this in uh, keyboard mode, so I actually don't know how to view the details of a game. But that's all right, we'll explore that a little bit later anyway. So let's go ahead and disconnect from Parsec. For Parsec, all you need to do is make sure that you go into your settings and on your host device, you'll need to go to host and you'll need to enable hosting. Without this enabled, your client devices won't actually be able to connect. You won't see it pop up in the list of computers um, over here in our computers tab. The other thing is you'll want to make sure that you leave most of this the same. You know, there's descriptions here that are really helpful. The one thing that you'll need to make sure that you play around with is on the host, in the host tab, you'll want to go and make sure that you play around with your bandwidth. I found for 1080p gaming, 50, 15 excuse me, megabits per second is perfectly fine. If you're going to 1440, let's bump up to 20 or 25. And if you're trying to do 4K, really 35 to 40 is your sweet spot. Now again, your network has to be able to support these kinds of upload speeds. So it's important that you kind of do a little testing and play around. It might take a while before you get it right. Now, this is only if you're accessing it externally. If you are on the same network, so the phone you're streaming to or the computer you're streaming to and your host are on the exact same Wi-Fi network or uh, even LAN network, so you're, you're wired by Ethernet, then it'll actually connect with as much bandwidth as it can muster. So it will actually bypass this limit and it will use whatever it needs to. So you're probably going to get a lot less latency because you're right there on the same network um, and you'll see that things are quite a bit more seamless for in-home streaming, which is primarily what I use, but it works great for out of the home as well, as long as you are connected to a decent Wi-Fi connection. Awesome, so next let's take a look at Play Night. Okay, so we are actually dialed in here to our hosting PC, right? And here's Play Night in big picture mode. It's pretty freaking awesome and it's actually really easy to use. So. First, let's go ahead and click the Play Night icon and let's drop out into desktop mode. A lot of your configuration has to be done in desktop mode. So if you're just a PC gamer and you really don't need the big picture mode, this is also awesome. It will also launch all of the games, show you all the details, automatically import art and descriptions and everything like that. Just like that. So when you initially run Play Night, you'll actually set up, it'll ask you what accounts you have. So if you have an Epic Games account, an Xbox account, all of those things, and it'll automatically import all the installed games on your computer. You can also go up here and you can open the clients directly. You'll see extensions. Uh, you don't have to worry about these. These are mostly what manage importing the games. And in your library, you'll be able to actually configure emulation. If you have emulators, you can add those. And then finally, you can add a game. So you can add it manually. You can just scan everything add an emulated game or specifically add a Microsoft Store application. So it may not just be games. You can add whatever you want here for quick launching. So now that you have this, all you do is you click play and it launches the game. So let's actually take a look at uh, something that Stadia did that I kind of laughed at. During their demonstration, they showed someone picking up a game from a PC uh, or from a computer to a TV, to a phone, some variation of that. It may be TV to computer to phone. I think it was I think it was that one. Anyway, let's actually shoot it from our host PC to our client PC and then pick it up right on our phone. Let's let me show you that that's possible for free without you paying Google for very limited games and no permanent versions. So yeah. 
Alrighty guys, so we're gonna do something a little bit fun here. I'm gonna demo basically what they did with Google Stadia and show you that using free tools and your computer at home, you can do this. So we're on our client device here. Our desktop is basically running the full server setup and we're just gonna connect. And we have this Xbox uh, One controller just plugged via USB into the client laptop here. So all of the input controls are actually coming from the laptop and not the host device directly. And what you'll notice is right off the bat, the actual input is pretty much real time. Um, it'd be really hard for me to measure the latency on the input alone, but it is unnoticeable to me. Now the video stream obviously will is uh, have some delay and, and you will notice it, but it's very, very, very minor. Unless you were playing competitive FPS games or anything with lightning fast reaction time requirements, you really would be hard pressed to notice the difference, especially when streaming over your own network at home. So let's take a look here and we're streaming at 1080p and let's go ahead and launch Dark Souls. Now you may notice my Dark Souls uh, looks a little bit different than yours. That is actually because I'm running the Cinders mod. I've beaten this game, I mean, a couple dozen times with the million different builds, and uh, I found the Cinders mod, and it's freaking awesome. It, it really changes how the entire game plays out. Um, it seems like it'd make you a little bit overpowered, but trust me, it's, it's pretty difficult uh, depending on how you decide to play. But of course, that's Dark Souls for you. If you, if you want to run an easy build, feel free, but you know. You can also make it as difficult as you want to. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop in the game. And I want you guys to pay attention specifically to the latency between the client and the host device. Now remember this client device is actually over Wi-Fi. So I have my host server hardlined into the router and this is connected over five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So right off the bat, what you're probably gonna notice is the latency is extremely minimal. You know, if I, go and, and let's get into a little bit of a fight here i'm having really no problem and i'm actually staring at the laptop screen here at an extremely weird angle and it's still perfectly fine awesome well that's all well and good but let's say i was really streaming this to my tv and my significant other comes in and they want me to leave so they can use the tv great why don't we disconnect from our laptop here and let's pop over to our phone and let's connect on our phone. All of a sudden, it is perfectly playable on our phone as well. And you notice we have uh, about the same amount of latency. I've actually noticed the phone is a little bit better. Um, I don't know why I haven't really done an in-depth dive. It could just be uh, the iGPU that's used in my laptop just isn't great, but I've noticed the phone is, I mean, damn near unnoticeable when we are on local Wi-Fi. So just a demo of, you know, all that wonderful uh, new age demo hype that Stadia tried to present to you as something that just was out of this world and only they could accomplish. Well, here you go. This is free. Just using the stuff that I already own. So clearly that wasn't true. And you can set this up for yourself as you've seen really easily. So with that out of the way, I, I do want to dive into a couple of the pitfalls here. So while this system is awesome, there are some drawbacks. It's not going to be perfect. You are going to notice a little bit of latency and you will notice some compression here and there, especially in gun games when you're whipping back and forward. It's also really not viable for competitive gaming or anything with lightning quick reaction times needed in any consistency. It's just not there yet. Uh, cloud gaming is a beast and it's very new and it's going to take time to get that latency lower and lower and lower and lower. Also, what you witnessed today was on a local network, right? I was right next to the server on the same router that the server is wired to. So obviously that's gonna be a very best case scenario. If you're trying to do this over 4G, there are some playable games, but 
you're gonna notice a couple frames of delay. It'll be noticeable. Now, if you're over 5G, uh, to my understanding, you're gonna get mixed results, but you might start to see some pretty awesome playable results, especially on FPS games too. So that's something to consider as 5G becomes more widely available. This is gonna be viable just to like play on the train. So that'll be pretty cool. If your buddies uh, have good internet, they can actually dial into your server and play with you. But again, here's another limitation. This is dependent on your total available upload bandwidth because each person that connects is sharing that total maximum. So if you've set it for 15 megabits per second for 1080p gaming, that's great for you. But the minute you get another buddy or two buddies on, all of a sudden you're all sharing that 15 megabit and it's not gonna be great. So it's best to dial the stream down to 720 or potentially if you have more bandwidth to spare, you'll upload up that bandwidth cap as you are adding more buddies in. So it is also important to note that Parsec is not just for gaming. Uh, Parsec seems to have pivoted themselves and really highlighted that CAD work, uh, Photoshop, video editing, all of these things are perfectly viable for Parsec. Now, because of the way that it's compressed, any kind of color grading or color specific work probably isn't going to be doable on Parsec. Um, but if all you need is to jump in and do a quick video edit or you know mess with a model, perfectly fine. I myself have actually done that many times and have found it not only perfectly usable, but I honestly forget that I'm using Parsec sometimes, especially if the internet is half decent. So really just get out there and explore, set it up for yourself, figure out what you want to use it for. If you want to use it for the cloud game streaming server project, please go ahead. If you want to use it for something else, go ahead. It's, it's there and it's free. So what I really want you to take home is that Cloud gaming is great. It's really cool, but there are in inherent downsides. A lot of these services don't have every game, and a lot of them, you don't even own a physical copy of the game. If you leave their service, your games are gone, even though you spent potentially hundreds or thousands of dollars on them. This way, you own all of your stuff. You can play it on your computer, or you can stream it from your computer to your other device. You own the entire means here. Additionally, if you don't have a powerful PC, all Parsec is, again, is a remote client, a remote desktop client. So you can set up a paper space gaming machine and build your own actual cloud gaming server that has a, a gigabit connection. While obviously you're gonna pay for that because you're renting the PC, the prices can be pretty reasonable depending on what configuration you get. So for 20, 30 bucks a month, you can get 40 hours of playable games a month. So for those road warriors who just want to play while they're traveling, perfectly doable. Well guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment below if you wanna know any more information or if you're interested in more videos about game streaming. Um, I have actually built a little Raspberry Pi streaming device that's connected to my TV and allows me to connect Parsec there as well so I can kind of jump to any TV in the house or my phone or any of my computers anything and please 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 hit us up and join our discord server our twitter our instagram any kind of likes or follows you can spare will really help us uh, grow and we really appreciate you watching we'll see you on the next one bye